Septuagint, Genesis 1, 29 and 30. Kaepen hatha as edu dedoka human panhortan sparamon speron sperma ha estin epano pases tes geis kaepan xulon ha eche en heoto karpan spermatos sparimu human estai es brosen kai pasi tois te reois tes geis kai pasi tois pete nois tu uranu kai panti herpeto to herpanti epites geis Ha eche en heotopsu kenzoes, panta hortan, chloran es brosen, kayagenata hutos. And God said, again we have verb, subject, and then object. Apen once again is from Lego. It's the third singular aorist indicative active. Apen is a second aorist. And God said, idu, behold. This is an imperative, really, from the verb horao. And it's used to draw attention. It's an aorist imperative. It is like eke in Latin and hine in Hebrew. Behold, I have given dedoka to you. Dedoka is the perfect first singular indicative active of the verb didomi, the me verb didomi, whose fourth principal part is this, dedoka. Behold, I have given to you pan chortan sparaman speron sperma. Every pan plant chortan. Every plant that is a sparamon plant, a seed-bearing plant, which is bearing, speron, its seed. Speron is a participle, and its object is sperma, which is neuter. This repetition might seem superfluous to us, but in the Hebrew, whence it's taken, it's used for emphasis. This is also an instance of alliteration, agglutinatio, a figure of speech which Greek and Latin generally avoid, but clearly it's used here. So, ha, then the relative pronoun, has as its antecedent sperma. So, the seed which is, upon, epano, passes tes geis, the whole earth. The first object, then, of dedoka is khortan. The second object is xulon. I have given to you every plant and kai, every tree, xulon. So, every tree, ha, which, that's the relative pronoun, has, eche, in itself, karpan, the fruit. Karpan is masculine, singular, and accusative. The fruit, spermatos sparimu, of its seed-bearing seed. Huminesta es brosen, to you, masculine plural, and dative, dative of possession, to you, they will be, estai, as food, es brosen. Here, es the preposition with the accusative brosen, used with an idea of purpose, and estai is a third singular future indicative from the verb emi sum, which means to be, and in the future this verb is deponent, thus this middle ending, they shall be food for you. And, verse 30 continues, pasi tois the reois, to all living creatures, or beasts they reois, of the earth, and to all pasi tois pete nois, to all birds, flying things, of the heaven, to Uranu, and to every creeping thing, panti herpeto, to herpanti, which creeps upon the ground. We have these three groups then, theriois, petenois, and panti herpeto, to all of them, each with their adjective, pasi pasi, and panti, creeping thing upon the earth, ha eche, which has in itself psukain zoes, the breath or the soul, the existence of life. And then for all these dative indirect objects, tois the reois, tois pete nois, and panti her peto, we have to have a supply of this verb, dedoka, I have given to each one of them, which has in itself, etc., panta hortan chloron, every green plant, panta hortan chloron, as food, a repetition of ace, Brosen, so food for humankind, men and women, and now food for the beasts, es brosen. This word chloron, meaning green, gives us the English word chlorine. And then the summary statement, kayagenata hutos, and it was just like this. Again, agenata, the aorist from gignomai, it's a middle verb, deponent, it's built on the third principal part, and then hutos is an adverb.